Hey guys, what's happening? So in this one, we're picking up with more X-Men Blue and talking about the confrontation between Doc and, and James Hudson Jr. And I'll admit, like this one for me, it's a little bittersweet. And I wanna know what you guys think down in the comments cause I'm sure plenty of you guys have read this already. And I wanted to share my thoughts and kind of just chop it up with you guys and see what you took back from this issue as well. Or these issues, I should say, because when is a video ever really just one issue? <laughs> but either way, this one is actually going to be a quick one. And I know that I said that last time about the Old Man Logan video, but this time for real, for real. Alright, so as you guys know, in the last video, I got pretty thorough talking about how this new X-Men Blue team came together and how Jimmy Hudson came to be a part of it early on and later on how Magneto recruited Dokken to be on the newer team around the time that the younger Time Displaced X-Men were in space with Venom. And I'm not going to go back into all that, I'll leave a link in the description so if anybody needs to get caught up, you can use that to go back and watch the other one and when you come back here, a lot more this will make sense. And that's mainly because a lot of what's in x-men blue ties into a lot of other issues of like all new x-men a little bit of venomized and that's mainly why i jump around a bit when i pick a certain topic to talk on and hopefully that helps because i see you guys in the comment section sometimes and i notice there's quite a few of you who read the issues and when you pick them up you're kind of like okay this is x-men blue and why is this happening here why did with why did this pull up this now i didn't know there was this that or the other tie-in so that's why i like to sew it up a bit so you guys have a better understanding going through some of these other issues but either way, where we left off, the younger X-Men had just returned from space towards the latter end of the Venomverse series. And at this point, a number of heroes had already been Venomized, plus you had different versions of heroes and villains who had came here from a completely different universe. And so when the X-Men got back and the Hive was going after Anti-Venom, James Hudson Jr., who was trying to hold off the Hive, mainly from bonding with other mutants, he ended up getting bonded himself. And it was also at that point in the Venomverse series where we got a glimpse of Magneto's perspective of James Hudson Jr after he had been bonded with the poison. And that's one thing we would see later on play a significant role with Magneto giving Doc and his orders to bring in James later on. And so now much of this I did cover in the Thanos Venomized video, but I wanted to go back to this for a little bit because one of you guys was asking me on Twitter about the conclusion of Venomverse in relation to James Hudson meeting Dokken. And that's mainly because in the conclusion of Venomverse, Jean Grey, who was also Venomized, used that connection to destroy the Hive Queen and in turn destroyed the poisons that were under that queen. But even with that being done, all the poisons from that hive, they all weren't destroyed and some were still bonded. And in this case, even after the conclusion of Venomverse, James was still bonded with a poison who had no queen. And as a result, he went missing. And during that time missing, he was kind of going back and forth, trying to gain control over his own body because this poison that he was bonded with, which at this point no longer had its queen. And as a result, it was trying to develop its own identity by taking over James Hudson's body rather than sharing like your normal symbiote and that's why when the younger x-men had found james they were going back and forth with him trying to save him and his mind from this poison who was trying to take over and develop this new identity and so in response to that twitter comment about the connection with venomverse and gene gray destroying the poison hive queen and even after all that james hudson still being bonded with this poison like at this point we don't have a definite answer of why this one didn't die off like the rest and if i'm not mistaken there are a few others that also weren't killed off after the queen died because i want to say poison carnage is still out there as well but in the curious case of James Hudson Jr., I'd probably make the guess that part of the reason why this poison didn't die, like they probably had to do with two main reasons. And this first one may have been most of it. And that first reason is one with any hive, every single member that is connected to that hive, they don't have the exact same connection. Some are a little bit stronger. And even in real hives, different members of that hive will have different responsibilities than other members of that hive in itself. And that's only because each member of the hive is not doing the exact same thing. And that's something you'll see like with bees, for example, like when a hive rejects its queen, the ones that do the most work are usually the most aggressive. Like when bees reject their queen, they'll actually try to kill her. But I'm just using that as an example that all hive members aren't connected equally, if that makes any sense. Because if they were, in that case, all the bees would be going ham. And I think there's a YouTube video on that, like dude stuck his hand in with trying to save the queen. And out of all the bees, they didn't try to sting him. Some were kind of wandering, and then you had a few that just wouldn't give up. But even with that, there were a number of variables that took place in Venomverse and Venomized when a poison was killed. And one of them we saw before Jean had taken out the queen, which is actually one that Anti-Venom had taken down, where we found out that in some cases, once bonded with the host, when the poison was killed the host died as well 
But once again, this is one of those things where every case is different. And in addition to that, the distance can play a factor as well to where that poison is at at the time of the queen's death. But as far as James Hudson, my second point would be that this specific poison that he's bonded with either lucked out by just being one of the ones who didn't or part of his luck had to do with James's healing factor or perhaps even a combination of the two. And we may not get that full answer until B separates this poison from James Hudson completely. And so now at the end of Venomized, where we saw a couple of the poisons who had survived, one being James Hudson and the other being Poison Carnage. And Carnage, for whatever reason, similar to James Hudson, for whatever reason, he was able to block out the symbiote from taking over and remain the dominant consciousness within that bonding. Don't really know exactly how that worked, but that's how it happened. But with the X-Men pursuing after James Hudson, who had been missing since the conclusion of Venomized, they had fought with James, trying to bring him in more peacefully, with much of that credit to Jean, who was able to get into his mind with it being in conflict with the poison but as they were trying to take him in peacefully this was abruptly and rudely interrupted by Dokken and this is where I gotta say the bittersweet part comes in for me because as I mentioned before there's plenty of story reaching back even all the way to all new X-Men that explains why these two would fight each other all the way from the ties from Miss Sinister to Mother Vine even to the point of Dokken just being a jerk sometimes like these two clashing it makes complete and perfect sense especially when you factor in Magneto and his new plans with his new blue team with the addition of Magneto even feeling like at the point of bonding he had lost James to the poison and that was the reason that he sent Dokken also to go after James because he knew Dokken would do it by any means necessary and Magneto's request was definitely to bring him back and initially Dokken had that same intention as well and that's why at first he only followed the younger X-Men to see if they could bring him in and if they couldn't bring him in, if they can do what needed to be done. And that's really why Dokken just waited and watched while Poison James was throwing around the younger X-Men all day. And so when he intervened with the adamantium swords that he got from Magneto, and he was given these swords before he was told to go get James. Just want to put that out there. Like he got these swords while the younger X-Men were in space. So it wasn't like Magneto was like, here's a couple of adamantium swords, go get Jimmy. <laughs> nah, it wasn't like that. But instead, it was more of Dokken's personal call to take the more lethal approach. With Magneto, it was like more of a yeah if you need to but I'd much rather you bring him back alive but here's my thing about how this went down as far as the as far as the whole bittersweet thing because personally I just wanted the fight between Dokken and James I didn't want the X-Men saving him I didn't want no sneak attack I definitely didn't want no poison I just wanted regular James Hudson versus regular Dokken none of the extra stuff and that's just my personal opinion like let me know what you guys think down in the comments because I feel like this is really just an encounter that adds more fuel to the fight Fire, so that when they do square off which I feel like won't be too long from now but when they do square off James will no longer be bonded with the poison and for whatever reason at that time Dokken won't have his adamantium swords because that's the matchup I want to see and if you add to that like on an even playing field a matchup with Dokken who we know is skilled and trained I would say in comparison a more versatile fighter but with that Dokken going against your James Hudson who really doesn't have the fight training but he has proved himself to be a savage nonetheless because even though he's not train like Dokken. He doesn't have all the fighting styles. He hasn't learned the different meditations like Dokken has that speed up healing factor and grow limbs back like we saw with Dokken when he teamed up with Laura Kenny in Orphans of X. But James Hudson does have that animal instinct and also organic metal that he can either wrap around his bones or even come out in the form of different spikes. But once again that is more so the fight that I want to see. But when Dokken comes for James Hudson here and he still has the poison symbiote bonded with him, they're tossing each other around but there is no definitive winner like no matter what the other one dishes out they always come back which is also what I would predict to see in an actual fight between them two on an even playing field but in this case where Iceman steps in and he freezes the two of them preventing them from fighting any further it just really lets you know that this whole altercation really just serves the purpose of fueling the fire or boiling that bad blood that has already been brewing between the two of them. Because after this moment, even though the fight stopped, and Dokken eventually makes his way out by deflecting Gene's attack on his mind, which is really what separates him from James at this point. But even with that being done, we know at this point going forward that James is gonna hate Dokken even more. And now it's not just because he's always calling him brother, but now he's gonna hate him even more for making the choice to kill him rather than save him. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. I really want to know what you guys think about this one. So leave your thoughts down in the comments. In my mind, when I started this video, I said, okay, I'm only going to talk about this for a couple minutes. But then it ended up being your regular length. But either way, squat up in the comments and let me know either way, whether you agree or disagree. I want to know. So let me know and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.